in Dallas, Duke and Houston, first ever meeting between the two schools. Duke up by four, make it six. Jeremy Roach, the senior, all 14 of his points in the second half. How about a tale of two halves for Jeremy Roach? Eight seconds left. Houston down by three. Emmanuel Sharp gets the inbound. Tim, they, they should foul here, right? Duke should foul. Not even give him a shot. Got off pretty good look. Not able to convert. Out of bounds off Houston. And we move on if we are Duke. 54-51. Duke holds off the one seed out of the south. So that means two one seeds going down on back-to-back -back nights. The one seed in the west, North Carolina knocked out. The one seed in the south knocked out on this night. Kyle Filipowski, 16 points, 9 rebounds. He had a big game. Jeremy Roach, as I mentioned, all 14 of his points in the second half. The big story for Houston, Jamal Shedd was injured in this game in the first half. Severely sprained right ankle, helped the locker room, did not return. One of their best players, and Houston comes up short in Dallas. Back here with Tim Doyle, you heard his voice, now you see him, and you see Duke on to the Elite Eight. How did Duke get this done against a stifling Houston defense? Well, you touched on it, but let's just call it what it was. When Jamal Shedd went out, that changed the complexion of this game. But the fear with Houston coming into the tournament was that Houston was going to Houston. And I said that before the game, but what does that mean? 51 points, 25% from three. They made two threes. Now, Duke only made... Six threes, but that is a 12-point difference. Ironically enough, both these teams shot exactly the same from the field. They were 20 of 47 from the field. So both teams right around 40%. But Houston just had a really hard time creating any offense. And Kyle Filipowski, Filipowski yep. um, he actually only had two assists, but I counted five more hockey assists. Do you know what that means? The yes, pass yes. to the pass. Secondary. Why are you smiling over there smirking? Because I thought you were going to give me intimidates, which is one of my favorite stats that you have in the Tim Doyle analytics department. Intimidates is one of my favorite. I had last year during UConn's national championship run, you had Adama Sonogo with like eight intimidates. I thought you were going to hit me with that, but you gave me hockey assists. I like that as well. Yeah, because what happened was they had a hard time creating any offense. So basically he started to go and then they were sending doubles and then he would throw the pass that led to the pass. Yeah. And Kyle Filipowski played on USA's three on three team. And three-on-three -three basketball, which is now an Olympic sport, is a very rugged, physical style of play. And even though when you think of Filipowski, you don't think of, like, rugged, physical style. When I was watching the game, because I've been involved in three-on-three -three basketball for 15 years, he kind of went back to that mode where he was just getting in the lane and putting his head down and finding guys, and then they were finding the right guys. But when Shed got hurt, that changed the complexion of the game. Uh, Duke showed a lot of toughness. I don't want to say they out-toughed Houston, but Houston came out, intimidated them, punched them in the mouth, and Houston had a chance to be up 14-4, to 18-3. Like, they didn't put enough separation in when Duke got off to such a slow start when they were intimidating them to start the game. And then once Duke started to believe in itself, Kim, that's when the game started to change. 41%. Both teams shot from the field. The difference here, Tim, the free throw line. Duke was 8 of 12. Houston was 9 of 17. Well, that's not really a difference. They made 9. I know they missed I know. 8. No, the difference was a 3-point line. That, well, okay. Th th that's a 12-point difference, even though uh, I'm sorry, 18 to, to 6. Yeah, it's a 12-point difference. That, that's what it really came down to. Uh, yeah, 2 of 8. Yeah, rebounding was, you know, uh, about even. Actually, Duke got rebounded, Houston. But when Shed went out but of the But Jawan game, Roberts went to the line a lot late. They fouled him a lot. He hits a couple more free throws, and we might be in overtime right now. Correct. I'm just, and, you know, I'm just saying what if. Factor. Sure, absolutely. And, you know, if they would have made a, a few more perimeter shots, I mean, they only shot eight threes. Um, this was a grinded-out type of affair. And you know what Duke has done in all three games? They've grinded out wins. I mean, they've been excellent on the defensive end. Didn't have to do much against JMU. They blew him out. But, yeah. JMU won a game. They beat Wisconsin. I know, I know but Duke, I mean, they, they obliterated JMU. Yeah, but Wisconsin just went to the final of the Big Ten. They gave Purdue all it could handle in the Big Ten championship game. So, uh, this was a uh, not a very pretty game, but uh, Duke showed a lot of toughness, and uh, they're going to be a tough out. Duke advances to the Elite Eight. They'll meet their fellow ACC rival, NC State. 
NC State, if you remember, beat them in the ACC tournament. Most wins against one seeds all time. Duke now leads the way with 10. They are not a one seed in this tournament, a four seed. And now they'll take on the 11 seed NC State Wolfpack, who are on quite a heater. Eight wins in a row. And Duke and NC State for a spot in the final four on Sunday night. Coming up, Duke and Houston dueling in Dallas. We'll head to the home that Luka Doncic built. Just kidding. Next on CBS Sports HQ. Duke out duels Houston in Dallas. 54-51. Jeremy Roach, the senior, all 14 of his points in the second half. They were clutch, as was Kyle Filipowski. Flip getting buckets, hitting a big three late, a big and one late. The story for Houston, one of their best players of the game, injured in the first half. Jamal Shedd, right ankle injury, severely sprained, had to be helped to the locker room, and Houston was not the same after he left the game. Get right to the site. Welcome to CBS Sports College basketball writer Kyle Boone, who joins us from Dallas. And Kyle, I want to start right there with Houston. When Jamal Shedd went out of the game, what was the impact for the Cougars' rest of way? Yeah, it was an immediate impact. He left the game with 638 remaining in the first half. Um, Duke closed the first half on a 13-6 run immediately after he left the game. And um, Shedd is the Big 12 player of the year. He's the Big 12 defensive player of the year. He is the heart and soul of this Houston team. Without him, uh, you know, they made a good run. Um, they were able to kind of stay in this down to the end, which says a lot about Houston. Uh, but without their best player, um, Houston just did not have the horses to keep up with Duke. What did you see from Duke, specifically Jeremy Roach in the second half, who scored all of his 14 points in the final 20 minutes? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's uh, perfectly on brand for Duke, right? I mean, we talk about Jer Jared McCain being a potential lottery pick, Kyle Filipowski being a, a potential lottery pick, um, and then the luxury that Duke has uh, with a senior and Jeremy Roach, former five-star recruit who steps up in a huge moment in the second half, scores all 14 of his points in the second half. Um, that is kind of the way that Duke can beat you. They have so many different guys. Um, they have depth in their backcourt. They have guys in the front court who can match up well with anyone. Um, they come at you in waves, and uh, Duke's depth tonight, I think, showed up, and especially with Houston banged up. You know, Jawan Roberts has been banged up. JoJo Tugler is out for the season. Jamal Shedd left this game early with an ankle injury. Uh, Duke just was the healthier team. They were the better team, and they're the team that's advancing into the Elite Eight. Duke and NC State for a spot in the Final Four. Kyle Boone will be there for us here on CBS Sports HQ. Take a look at Duke's last seven games against better seeds. Tim, they, they hadn't won any of them. Wow. Look at that. I mean, they, they beat the one seed Houston, and they snapped a streak of six losses, losing to the better seed. Duke dancing on an all-ACC regional final. Coming up, we head back to Detroit. Who's moving on in Motown next on CBS Sports HQ?